we're back for another video and uh, that begs the usual question what are we doing today well you've probably noticed this water snake over here this is a uh, 54 pound water snake electric trolling motor that I use on my Argo uh, which is an eight-wheel drive amphibious vehicle um, an example of that is this little thing here now um, during a recent trip which I'll find a video clip for you up in the corner here Something smells like electrical burning. Okay. Well, my outboard just shat itself. That's annoying. It, uh, it let its magic smoke out. And um, <laughs> by that, I mean it had an electrical fault. The actual motor function is, is still works, but uh, the voltmeter now doesn't. And... Uh, I think during all the rattling and vibration and stuff, this eventually developed um, a problem with this bolt rattling out and uh, I had to put a replacement in. I think perhaps when I've done that at some point it's put uh, some cabling at risk of chafing. So I'm going to open this up and see exactly what melted. It still smells very badly of burnt wiring. So uh, yeah, we'll do a bit of an autopsy, see if we can fix it up, maybe resurrect or replace the voltmeter should be nice now one of the biggest issues I have is the size of this thing and fitting it on my desk um, and we're also during lockdown too so getting spare parts is going to be fun let's see how this guy works to get this out um, find my these are just Phillips screws I'm in quite a bit of pain today too so I've kind of overdone my physical activity a little bit lately. So they're both the same length. Let's see what we get here. All right, looks like that lifts the top off. Now before we have our first look in here, let's move our camera angle over a little bit. All right, we've got a different camera angle. Now I can instantly smell that bad uh, burnt electrical smell. So we're gonna bring some ventilation just over from the top here a bit and um, run that. I'm sorry if it makes a bit of noise, but it needs to be done. All right, let's have a look at what's going on in here. All right, so straight away I see a melt mark in the voltmeter side of things, but otherwise everything else seems to be relatively okay. So um, this has been solved. Oh, that's a plug. Okay, so we can remove that with a plug. So the rest of this this big rotary switch is pretty simple as I had expected. Um, so the, let's get a torch in here so I can see a bit better. Or a flashlight if you're American. So yeah, most of those things are soldered on. They all look pretty good. It's just a rotary switch. I'm guessing they've got different windings in the motor or a big resistor down there somewhere. But yeah, it's just literally a switch. So that's all right. So the thing that's burnt out is in the top there. So let's get all this off my desk and we'll work on the voltmeter component. Now I uh, was just in the midst of moving things off for the extraction fan running and uh, one of the blades collided with it and snapped off. I'm glad I've got about a million and one 80 mil fans. Anyway, let's get on with this. All right, we're gonna have to deal with the fan being even noisier now that it's missing a uh, fan blade. It's wobbling around a bit. But uh, yeah, I can see a big melt mark here too, um, on the top of this. So I think certainly something shorted out in here. Ah, now that funny knocking sound you heard, that was my perimeter beam alerting me that somebody was there. It's just my neighbor returning some fuel that he had borrowed. All right, well, we have a burn mark in the top here, so that tells me something has been hot. Oh wow, so it's a resin infused voltmeter that has had a problem under the... Alright, so <laughs> there's probably very little I can do about this. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting. And that probably tells me there's very little I could have done to do that. It's, it's not likely to have suffered from water ingress or anything. But yeah, definitely a big chunk of resin there. All right, well, I guess I'm going to see if I can improvise some other kind of voltmeter in here. I'd say there's a um, 
something like a capacitor's blown up in there. I need to see if there's some way I can dissolve resin um, and depot that and find out what happened. Um, so, let's see what I've got in the way of voltmeters that might fit that hole. Alright, so I've got two different styles of meter. I've got the big ones that I like, they're easy to read. And I can pop these out of the, the holder and put them there, but I'm probably not going to be able to read all the digits. <coughs> I have this one, which is pretty much exactly the same thing that'll be in this resin block, but I'm just not sure why they've used such a huge resin block. Looking at where that melt mark is, I think it might be just like they've had a short head in the, where the wires have actually connected to it. So I think this guy might be the way to go. And I might just epoxy that in the hole and coat it with some white. Yeah, I think that might fit straight in that hole there. I think we'll just glue that down. And uh, I don't see any signs of water ingress past that sticker, so I think we'll be alright. I'll get a bit of alcohol in there and clean up the melty mark on it. And um, we'll go from there. Alright. A bit of this valuable isopropyl alcohol that is hard to find during these lockdowns. Everybody goes nuts with it. Just want to get stuff off that window at least. There you go. So that looks just a little bit cleaner. The top is a bit. Could probably use a bit of a clean. Still got some of the glue residue from the scratch guard that was on there when I originally purchased it. Wow, it still is. It's that glue residue. So it's like, why bother putting a scratch guard on if the glue from it just messes it up for the rest of eternity? Yeah, anyway, looks a bit cleaner anyhow. Um, let's get around to. Dropping this, I might just hot glue this thing in. I think that actually, I don't really care if that like two dollar voltmeter actually gets damaged all that much. Um, yeah, I can just replace it again if I have to. So I think I'm just going to hot glue that damn thing in there. I'll position it a bit with blue tack first, tack it down with a bit of glue. Uh, but first, I'm going to resurrect the wiring off this. Let's get our IPA out of the way. And we will snip these guys off and warm up a soldering line, which is over the side here. Okay. And uh, we'll be back once the iron's hot. So while we're waiting for the iron to heat up, we're going to um, strip some insulation off these guys. Just a little bit because we're going to solder direct to the module. Hoping that they have indeed done the wiring right because I've encountered some Chinese stuff lately where the polarity has been backwards although we can check from the incoming for this that the colors I'm just looking over behind the camera here at the top of the other unit uh, I know the colors from the incoming wire are correct and uh, that seems to have been the case that they have wired it correctly that is pretty well of very little use to me <coughs> oh the smell is pretty nasty I was going to cut that open, but just chuck it in the bin. I'm sick of it. And this fan blade, um, I think it's going to be worth more time to glue the blade back on than it is just grab another bloody fan. I've got a huge box full of them. Pulled out of old computers. Bit of blue tack here. Shaky fan. And uh, peel these off. Now, negative is on the outside edge. Okay, we want a tiny bit of leaded solder here just to help this process go a little more easily. Right, Get these wires which we will tin first. For some reason that fan, the extraction fan is not as effective as it once was. I can't imagine why. Snip the tips off here to shorten them up a little bit. Negative on the outside edge. <coughs> and we should be able to drop that one on nicely. And then we'll drop you in here as well. Alright. <coughs> now, 
that should be pretty well right. I would expect that it's fairly well calibrated, but we're going to hook this up and just make sure. All right, a bit more blue tack here. I'm going to get a meter as well involved in this. We get a 20 volt range. Let's give this guy 12 volts, which is about 13 at the moment with solar. And we're going to match that in here. Let's have a look. Get my needle probes to stick on here at the same time. So a 12.97 and it's registering 13 volts. I'd say that's close enough for me to have a ballpark figure as to whether it's time to turn around and go home. Alright, that's good. Let's get this glued in. Okay, so look, we're going to bump everything off the desk here. This cable is a bit stiffer than the original. <coughs> So we're going to use a couple of blobs of blue tack here just to position this roughly where we want it first and then I'll secure it with hot glue and then remove the blue tack. So that should be close enough, is near enough to being in the window there. Alright and it looks reasonably straight enough to not bother my OCD. Now you guys might wonder why I'm using a gas torch and a hot glue stick. Well. These cheap glue guns keep blowing up, the ones with the PTC heaters in them. This is a method I've been using for years that has, to date, never failed me. So we'll just... And this will hold that adjustment pot in place too. Frustrating me if I ever do need to adjust it, but... Yep. You don't ever get this stuff on your hands, it will take the skin off as well. It's way above the temperature of what a glue gun will, will get it to. Alright, we'll let this cool off a bit and then we'll move our blue tack. Alright, got one bit of blue tack removed. Try and get some hot glue on the corners here. I reckon I can probably let this just drip into that corner there. And it will bond nicely. Make a nice little bead all around here. It might potentially help with water ingress or make it worse, I don't know. Either way, we'll get there eventually. Anyway, I'm going to skip to the finished gluing stage here and then we'll move on from that. Alright, so finished applying hot glue. Now this is far from the prettiest or most professional job and it's not something I'd do if I was getting paid to do it. But this is my own personal device, so let's see how I want to do it. Um, hot glue is good enough, it does discolour a bit using the lighter and whatnot, and there is that burn mark that's under there, so it does, again it doesn't look pretty, <coughs> but really all it's got to do is provide me with a voltmeter output so that I don't get stranded on the water. Alright, we'll let this cool off and we'll reassemble. Alright, it's time to manoeuvre everything back into place and see if we can get this all reattached and functioning. Space is at a bit of a premium here. Which I'm just wondering with the top of this, um, I've got it sitting in front of me here, whether I should probably just do a little bit of a lubrication in here. I think I should. I have some sewing machine oil here. Might just put a gentle dribble of that on here. And a little bit on the bottom here. Hope you guys can see what I'm doing here. It sounds nastier with that oil in there instead of the grease, but you know what? That's what happens. And there's a bearing here that probably needs just the tiniest drop in there as well. And this has a bit of sliding contact to there as well. All right, no worries. Oh, that just snapped some leg hair. That was not fun. It still smells horrible in here. That stink has permeated everything. All right, so black, so that's negative. Black wire to black wire, which is negative on that. That is our red trace wire, which is positive, And that goes through to the red wire there. So that's all good. All right, let's point this back on, put some screws in, see if it still works. Um, the tricky bit here is going to be getting that bush to line up around the handle, which 
may have become dislodged with all the vibration. Looking at that, it's pretty well meant to sit there, so that I think I've got that right. It's the mechanical side of this that is a challenging bit. Oh, alright. Let's get this up on my desk and get the oil out of the way. This is a heavy motor, I will say that much. And it is very awkward and gets in the way of the camera everywhere. Okay. I kind of feel like that is not aligning properly. Or it's hopped forward or something. Let's drop it into the rear slot there. That seems like that fits much better. It does. Okay. So that the that uh, Teflon ring was in the wrong position. So let's get this in here and do this up. Pause there a moment. My uh, financial manager could smell burning wire smell in the house and came to investigate. Um, but uh, that would be because I turned off the extraction fan because it would get in the way of this. So yeah, it certainly does make a difference. Even missing a blade. That's that's today's repair job. This thing has got a mad amount of torque for a little motor. Oh, I've got two screws left over, that's because I'm not using that bracket anymore. Um, okay. Now, this slopping head on here, I'm not sure if there's much more I can do about it. I will eventually buy another one of these, but for the time being, um, that will function. There's a hex slot in here, like that cable gland's meant to fit in there, but anyway. Let's uh, hook this up, let's flip it around so we can see the top and then we'll hook it up to some power and see what happens. Now you'll have to excuse the messy end of my desk, I don't normally film in that direction and thus all the junk gets pushed up the end there. Now um, I have the prop off the ground, um, I'm using my good silicon leads because if I happen to um, try and pull 55 amps out of this thing. Um, It'll probably, while the fuses will handle it, and I'm running 50 amp wire back to the main house battery, it'll probably toasty these leads up. <laughs> and these are two that I toasted on the, um, the diesel heater the other day. Now, let's try and connect over to our 12 volt supply up here. That is our positive side. That is our negative side here. Let's double check. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. This is in the off position, and now that is very important. Let's turn our power on. All right, we have volts, and it is showing 13 volts. Let's pick our camera up. We are showing 13 volts, 13.1, which agrees with the solar input right now of 13.1. And it is a very nice sunny day out there, so doing pretty well. All right, so I think we've successfully managed to repair that, so we've done a good job. Um, yeah, I think that's about all there is to this video. So uh, we'll turn off here. And uh, yeah, we'll get this video edited and out. So um, anyway, yeah, they do burn out, but they're fairly easy to replace. I like the fact that they haven't integrated this circuit into everything else, that it's been kept fairly nicely isolated and on a plug. So for that matter, I do like the water snakes in that uh, that would actually be fairly easily field serviceable. I could have probably done that in the field if I had to. Um, so the rest of it, and the, the, these shafts on these things, I'm not sure whether they're made out of adamantium or titanium or whatever the hell they're made out of, but I have done some crazy irreckless things with this pole, like backing into things and all sorts of stuff, and it hasn't bent. So, um, yeah, it's a seriously robust pole on it. The top and the screws and everything like that, they don't put nylocks in it, so it's not real good with vibrations but that's not something you'd expect on a boat. Um, in terms of the mechanism, which I won't show you because you'll have to see all my dead socks on the floor under the desk, um, the mechanism for retracting this does tend to get a little bit corroded over time, and the nuts and bolts here I've had to replace because they've vibrated out. But aside from that, yeah, not a bad outboard. Anyway, 
this is pretty well the end of the video. So I hope he's had fun. I hope he's, uh, I guess, criticised my hot glue work in the comments. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Have fun, guys, and stay safe.